case 2306045901, the people versus Amir, A M I R, Napper, N A P P E R. Mr. Napper is charged with uh, <laughs> fleeing and looting police officer in the uh, first degree. All right. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Jaron Anderson on behalf of the people, P85434. Good morning to this honorable court. Carla Marable, P number 62755, on behalf of the defendant. Mr. Napper, right. please state your full name for the record. Daniel Okay, I couldn't understand him. Uh, state your name again, sir. Daniel Napper. All right. Uh, Mr. Napper, I apologize. I did not call all of your cases, all of your charges. You also have a count two, reckless driving causing death. Count three, operating while license suspended, revoked, denied, causing death. Count four, weapons, carrying, concealed. All right. Those are all of your charges. All right. Uh, uh, who's uh, representing the people? That would be uh, me, Your Honor. Okay. All right. All right. Ms. Marable? Your Honor, this is a um, bond reconsideration, and we're asking for a 10% provision of this bond. The purpose of bond is twofold, that um, the protection of society and that the person shows up, the second is that the person shows up for court and goes through their court dates. I don't believe that he's a flight risk, Your Honor. Um, he's 20 years old. He lived his whole life in the city of Detroit. Um, his parents and family ties is here. And I always like to mention that when people are young, they don't have the resources to maybe flee. So I don't believe that he's a flight risk. I don't believe that he's a danger to society. He has no prior criminal record, no um, abusive record or anything like that. Um, and he no longer, um, if you were asking for a 10% provision for the bond, um, he would not be driving. Um, I did give you, Mr. Um, Napper is unique in the sense that he has a unique medical condition and being in the Wayne County Jail is very um, hard for him medically. Um, he takes a special medication and I spent all weekend trying to get Wayne County Jail to get the medication. On Saturday, I was able to talk to the nurse and they ordered it. Um, they still won't have it until like Wednesday. So we're not, and I know that this is a very serious case. I told the family, we're not asking for a personal bond. What we're asking for is a 10% provision on the 50,000. Anything? Yeah, that's going to be my case here. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, as the court's aware, the, the consideration that the court looks at is, is danger to the community and flight risk. Uh, you know, obviously, count one is fleeing and eluding in the first degree, that being fleeing from a police officer, that flight resulting in the death of another individual. In this case, that individual was an uninvolved motorist simply traveling down uh, Chrysler Drive next to the highway. Um, I can tell the court I've seen the video of this case. The entire thing is caught on video. Uh, Mr. Knapper confesses to, to everything as well. Um, when police first see Mr. Knapper driving his vehicle, he's doing speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour in a 55. He's bobbing and weaving through vehicles. Uh, once the officer uh, initiates his lights, that's when Mr. Knapper decides that he's gonna cut across all four lanes of traffic, uh, jumps the, the exit berm, uh, and then striking the uninvolved motorist in this case. So uh, he's clearly a flight risk. He's demonstrated that uh, with the facts of this case. And I think he's a danger to the community in the sense that not only has his license been previously suspended, but he's driving recklessly while fleeing from the police. So um, for those two reasons, Your Honor, I think the $50,000 cash bond is actually inadequate. Um, I would ask the court for a $100,000 bond, no 10%. Uh, if the court is not inclined to do that, um, I would just ask the court, um, I don't believe on the current bond conditions, there is a GPS tether requirement. Uh, if the court is not inclined to reduce bond, I would ask the court for a GPS tether with full hours of restriction. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Attorney Marable. So, Your Honor, the purpose, the prosecutor... No, no, no. no. I, have a que I have a question for you, uh, yes. Attorney Marable. <laughs> the charge 
of fleeing indicates that the person is a flight risk because that's what this charge is. Would you not agree with that? When I think of flight risk, Your Honor, I think of moving out of state, not going to court. That's my- oh, no, 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 no. Flight risk means you could be hiding in your cousin's basement. That does not mean you got to go out of state. It just means okay. you make yourself unavailable to the court. That's what flight risk is. It means you don't want to face your responsibility. That's what fleeing is. That's the original charge. And a danger to the community, that's reflected in the result in this fleeing. I mean, I, I don't understand how you can say he's not a flight risk if he's fleeing and he's not a danger to the community if he's killed someone. Okay. Well, Yara, at this time, it's all allegations. Okay. Yeah, because but apparently, yeah. apparently, apparently, it's on video, so it's a very strong. It's not whimsical. Okay. If, 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 you know, all right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to reduce the bond. I will, because um, I, I, I don't think there's anything any more dangerous than that. You know, people talk about people who discharge a weapon in a neighborhood or in a city, and how likely that is to. Uh, cause harm, immediate harm, or even death to someone. A car is a very, very big bullet. It is, it is more likely to hurt someone and hit someone than a bullet is, uh, unless someone's sh shooting into a crowd. Just, just a person who just discharges a weapon in the city limits. Yeah, that's 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 very dangerous. But a person who drives a the victim. How, how old was the victim? Uh, Your Honor, the victim in this case was 59 years of age. And I have no idea if the victim has a family, he has a wife, he has children, he has someone who will never see him again. I don't think there's anything any more dangerous than this counsel. What would cause this person to flee? What was this person doing in the first place? Just doing donuts or just speeding and decided that they did not want to submit or, 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 or yield to the officer? That they thought that they had the ability to do some, some uh, uh, what? What's the movie? Uh, Fast and Furious, and they they can elude and get away from the police because they got these amazing skills. Yeah, um, you know, this is a a body. I think I know what it is. I know why I'm here. I'm, okay, Your Honor, yes. when I think of fleeing. I think, you know, he's going to show up for his court dates. He's not a, a flight uh, risk in the sense that he's not going to show up for his court dates. What, he does what have... What, what, get, what, 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 you make a statement. What demonstrates to me that he's not going to show up? His family is going to make sure that he shows up for his court date. I don't, I don't see a family member here telling me that they're ensuring that he's going to be here. How do I know he's going to be here? Your return? Honor, his mother is on... Um, you know, the attorney, only attorneys are supposed to use the Zoom. His mother's on YouTube. Would you like to speak with her? She can get um, here. She's she's on no. YouTube now looking at no, it. No, no, I don't, I don't need that because uh, a mother's love tells me exactly what I know or I believe she's going to say. I rarely see a mother come out here and say, oh, my baby's dangerous and he's not going to come back. I'm never going to hear that. But that doesn't ensure to me that he is going to return because I don't know that she even has any control. Does she? Li does he live with his mother now? Yes, he does. <laughs> so she didn't provide any influence that would cause him not to do this. So what, what's going to change? Your Honor, we also, you could give a 10% provision of the bond and a tether and make a home arrest and just allow him to go back and forth to his doctor appointments, which are many. If you look at the paperwork, he's up for a transplant, Your Honor. Because, Your Honor, you could give him a 10% provision, tether, home arrest, and he can only go to court and doctor appointments. All right. What is his bond now? $50,000 cash? Yes. I'm going to make it $100,000, 10%. $100,000, 10%. GPS. Okay. And uh, he's going to be restricted to, he's 
not in school or anything like that. Uh, no, he's 35. He said, all right, doctor in court. That's it. That's the, um, anything other than that, he's going to be rearrested. He's going to be held. Okay. So it's a hundred thousand dollars, 10%, um, tether and home confinement, correct? Exactly. He has nothing else that you're going to describe to me that he needs to go to. He's not in school. He's not, uh, he does work. Point. Your honor. He does work. Um, he works at a, um, doing the oil changes, but um, I don't know if he still has the job. So do, do y'all want long, him to work? When did this incident occur? Oh, this incident occurred earlier this week. I think like Thursday, correct? It'd be Mr. December Anderson. the 11th is the date of our offense. Okay. No. Doctor offices, hospital appointments, uh, medical appointments and work. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Yada. Have a great Christmas. Thank you. Well. Mr. Anderson, can you send me the um, discovery? I don't, I didn't do the arraignment. Um, I was just retained over the weekend. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll the... get that to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yep. Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye. Judge, always good to start with. Good morning on the eighth floor at Wayne County Jail on the eighth floor. What's your name, please? Oh, my name is Brian Nadali Laina Sansa. Brian Nadali. What case do we have now? This is uh, Rayan or Le no, it's not the first name. Oh, uh, they Brian Lanez or Lanez. All right, who has Brian Lanez? Ready, Your Honor. We're ready. We're ready. All right. This is case number two three six zero four nine zero. The People versus Brian. I. Don't know that I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I do spell for the court reporter. B R A Y A N Lanez L A I N E Z. Again, don't know that I'm properly pronouncing that, but I do spell for the record. Mr. Lanez is charged with. Madam Clerk. Go one second. Who, who's speaking? Other people are here. Hold on, hold on one second. We need a little. I think who's speaking? Speaking to someone else that went to jail. It's just too close. All right. Yeah. Well, we got to get that straight anyway. So we'll do that. Uh, Mr. Linares. Mr. Linares. He's, he's muted. Yeah. I'm mute, please. Yes. I can't see the screen. Does it still, it's still muted? No. Mr. Is it your name? Linez? L-A-I-N-E-Z? Yes. All right. I need you to state your full name. My, my name is Brian Adali Lainez Lanza. All right. Do we have uh, uh, deputies? And then the computer is saying he's on a briefing. The deputy? Yes, deputies. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, who, someone's speaking, and it's them. I can't hear what's going on in the courtroom. I don't know who you're speaking to or who else is in the area that's speaking, but I can't. I got to have, I got to be able to talk to the defendant. I, I apologize, Your Honor. I was talking to the sergeant. All right, thank you. Well, I, yeah, I, please do that. Just step outside of the range of the microphone. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Linus, and I believe that's the way you pronounced it. Yes. You have, you have, you have two counts, sir. Hello, You're charged. Okay. Part B. Number, yes, this is case number 2360490, the people versus Brian Lanez. Uh, do you want the document? 
it's probably best on you to read to because you're gonna get that feedback because they're talking to other people who are really close. Yeah. All work. right. You, sir, are charged with two counts. Count one, police officer fleeing third degree, punishable by a maximum of five years. Count two, police officer assaulting, resisting, and, obstruct and or obstructing, punishable by a maximum of two years. Both of these are felonies. All right, counsel. Judge, good morning. It's a pleasure to see good Steve Vincent for the people. P7197. Good morning, good morning sir. Most honorable court. Philip Reagan, P57156, on behalf of Mr. Lyonez, who is here for bond redetermination. All right, counsel. Uh, judge is absolutely correct. There are two, there, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Reagan. My apologies. Uh, judge, my client, Judge, has a $30,000 cash bond. Um, he's 29 years of age, uh, lives in the city, li has lived his own life, Judge, lives with his uncle. Um, one of the things I do want to point out to the court, Judge, he's currently awaiting a sentencing for a PSC fourth degree uh, case, Judge, which is a, 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 a high misdemeanor or a, a two year uh, felony, Judge. His sentencing is in February of 2024. He is currently on a personal bond on that particular case. He also has a misdemeanor, Judge, that he is uh, a, a malicious destruction of property or malicious destruction of trees, uh, which he has a final pretrial also in February of 2024. So I want to point that out for the court judge to be forthright. Uh, but my client judge does live in the city, lives by himself, doesn't have any kids. I do understand, judge, the allegations, um, you know, are serious, judge. We have a, a fleeing case, it's, it's a uh, five-year felony, and we have a R&O judge, which is a two-year felony. My thing is, I, I understand the purpose of bond is to protect the community and to ensure that the defendant comes to court, Judge. Now, I think the court can use alternative measures to ensure that the community is protected and he comes to court. I think a GPS tether would do the job. I think restrictions on that tether would allow Mr. Lainez to only be able to go to work if the court allowed him to and come to court. Um, judge, even if he pled guilty to these matters or was found probably not going to do a day in jail. Um, the thing about it, Judge, I don't think we're here to punish, but I do understand the court has a responsibility to protect the community. And again, I think the court can do that with an alternative measure of a GPS tether. Uh, so I would ask respectfully the bond be reduced to a $30,000 personal bond with a GPS tether and house arrest. Judge. And he'll only be allowed to go to work and or court appearances and or medical Appearance, sir. Um, if I may, Judge. yes, sir, please. Um, and with all due respect to Mr. Reagan, he has a lot going on, so I can understand why he may be confused uh, regarding the cases that the defendant is going going through right now. He ended up pleading to the MDOP uh, charge that case, Judge, and that had to do with. Priest Elementary, right down the road, where the defendant was destructing property over an elementary school. Now he's awaiting sentencing for that case, but that sentencing is scheduled for February. Regarding the CSC case, as well as the A and B case, he hasn't pled to that. In fact, Judge, he's on bond, he's on tether, he's on curfew. So when he ended up picking up this case, when he ended up ramming his vehicle into a police car and trying to evade the police officers and then resisting and obstructing judge, he was on tether for the criminal sexual conduct case. And he was on curfew as well. So let's just get this all straight. He was on bond for the MDOP awaiting sentencing. He was on tether and curfew for the CSC and uh, assault and battery. And judge, that case has to do with this defendant finding a woman in a Wayne State parking lot, putting groceries in her car and thrusting himself on her. And then subsequently fleeing that area, going to another gal that was on a park bench and touching her inappropriately. Those were both caught on camera. Hasn't, hasn't fled to any of that. That's ongoing. 
So he's on tether and curfew for that, awaiting the sentencing. Oh, and by the way, and I can understand why Mr. Reagan failed to tell you this, Judge. There's a bench warrant out for his arrest out of Roseville for a retail fraud that he had picked up a few years back, but then he had a probation violation. He failed to appear. So he's failed to appear in that case. He actually failed to appear in the MDO, um, MDOP case. He ended up coming to redetermination on the MDOP because he was given a cash bond. Judge McConnell, um, in his infinite wisdom and patience um, and understanding, actually lowered that cash bond, but still kept it cash. So when he ended up pleading to the MDOP, it converted to a personal. So he was able to get out at that time. But then he had picked up the CSC and he had a tether and curfew and all of that other stuff. And now we have this. Oh, and the bench work. And now we have this. We have an individual who was fleeing from the police and in an attempt to try to get away, rams the police car to the point where that police car almost hit another individual. And then what does he do? He tries to flee. So, Your Honor, there is substantial flight risk here. Respectfully, I see a danger, not just for the prior cases that he's still going through the court system, but he ended up putting the community at risk, going, driving carelessly through neighborhood roads, um, disobeying police commands, hitting a police car. So respectfully, Judge, I think the 30000 is broke. I think the money, because bond hasn't done it, personal bond hasn't done it, Tether hasn't done it. Curfew hasn't done it, Judge. I think what's appropriate here is attention. Judge, Judge, and I think that was an outstanding closing argument, but we're not here for that. We're here for a bond redetermination hearing, and we have had an opportunity to adjudicate this case. Now, Judge, I don't know about a Tether. I don't know about Tethers in the past, but I do know that we're looking at a five-year felony and a two-year felony. So I'm thinking, Judge, that if you do confine him to his house under house arrest and say he cannot drive an automobile, he cannot leave the house, I think, Judge, in that particular situation, that would ensure that he does not get behind the wheel of a car and he does not uh, you know, go out and, and, and in the public, Judge, unless he's coming to court. And these matters can be adjudicated and these matters can be resolved. So I'm asking the court respectfully to consider my motion. Well, counsel, I... Uh... I'm flattered that you think my order would be any more effective than the other judge's order. Uh, he's had all of these restrictions that was given him by other judges and he's failed to comply. He's done what he wanted to do. Actually, I, I shouldn't say he's done what he's wanted to do, but he has definitely shown antisocial behavior. He's shown criminal behavior with the CSCs and all of these other matters that I'm hearing that he was on bond at that particular time. So. Uh, I don't know if it goes in one ear or he's just uh, he's just a person who feels that he can do anything he chooses to do. But I certainly don't understand why I could give him a bond and that would protect the community if no other judge's bond has protected the community from your client. He seems like a person who has uh, potentially some type of uh, mental disorder. Uh, I don't know if he doesn't understand what I would say or what any other judge has said. But he certainly hasn't complied, and I certainly will not change his bond hearing uh, that he has not complied with any other judge's bond conditions. Thank you, Your Honor, very much. So that was continued? Yes. Okay, thank you. I said I wouldn't change it, so yes, it is continued. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, may I have the next person at Wayne County Jail, please? May I have the next person? Oh, he's trying to speak. Could you unmute and say, uh, push unmute, please? So okay. what happened? I don't understand what happened. To your your bond is continued, Mr. Lyonez. My bond is it's continued. Your bond is continued. Okay. Continue. Yes, sir. And your attorney is going to come and speak with you about the case to try to get the case on track. When, okay? is, when, when is my next court? December 27th is your next court day. December 27th. I know. Judge Giles is going to be with a PCC with Judge Giles. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the office, let the deputy know that we need the next young man. 
lawyer, but the thing is, the, the police hit me from behind. I didn't oh, no, know. listen, we don't want to talk about the case. We don't want to talk about the case right now, okay? Yeah. Boy, you're, you're being streamed live, so that's going to be something you're going to talk about in private with, with your lawyer, okay? You don't want to talk about the case. Get the uh, the deputy right now. Let the deputy know what, that you're all done right now. Okay, thank you very much. All right, good luck to you, Mr. Lioness. Good luck to you.